Recently, there have been 20 new or extended marine protected areas established around the South African coast. And the zonation of these is quite difficult for users, in other words, fishermen and divers to understand. So what we've done is we've designed a little simple app that will help um, users to these areas understand firstly where they are and what the zonations of these different areas mean. So I'm going to start off by taking you into Ismangaliso Wetland Park here, which is our biggest um, marine protected area in South Africa now. And it looks quite complicated, but if you let me just break it down for you, you'll see that it's fairly, it's fairly easy to understand. The first thing to understand is that the zonation has been split between offshore, in other words, boat-based activities, and onshore, in other words, shore-based activities. So we've split the zonation for boat-based and shore-based activities. So let's start with the offshore, because that's probably the, the easiest and simplest to understand. Really, there are just two main zones to understand in this Mangalisa. Firstly, we've got this area offshore here, the area that's colored in red, um, and the area that goes through the center here. These are restricted no-take zones. So in these areas, you're not allowed to harvest fish, you're not allowed to take any living marine organisms out of the sea, and if you go through these areas on a boat, you have to have your GPS tracker on so that you can prove where, where you've been. All your fishing gear has to be stowed when you're in those areas. So you'll see it's, it's quite a strange type of angle, but that's because this is following a line of longitude and a line of latitude. So it's easy for someone who's watching you on a, on a radar to see whether you're in or out of the marine protected area. And this skew line up here is the border with Mozambique. This is the exclusive economic zone of Mozambique waters. So that's basically the no-take restricted areas, and this is a big um, wilderness area in the middle, which basically means the same thing. The only other no-take restricted area that's for boat-based activities is when you come up to Sudwana Bay. That's Sudwana Bay there, and that's Jessup Point. So from about quarter mile reef all the way up to nine mile has been zoned as a no-take area. And basically, this is where all the, the diving takes place, the scuba diving. So the idea here is to reduce the user conflict between extractive use, in other words, fishing and spearfishing, and scuba diving, which is non-consumptive use. So that was the rationale behind having that area closed. So that's the offshore zonation in terms of no-take areas. These big orange-colored areas are essentially what we call controlled pelagic zones. So this is just as it has been, um, and these areas you're allowed to fish in, but you can only catch pelagic game fish species. You can't fish on the bottom and catch reef fish species. So it's the species that you catch um, either trolling lures or, or fishing with, with live baits, um, and it's things like kuta and tuna and what have you. So there are a list of species that you're allowed to harvest but basically you can't fish on the bottom. So these areas are much as they have been. So Sedwana, you're still allowed to fish from Sedwana, and the same with Cape Bidal down here, you can still fish this area, but the old sanctuary area is still there between Levin Point and Red, Red Sands or Red Cliffs is still a big closed area. That's about 25 kilometers there. So that area extends all the way out um, to the deep water and this offshore. So even for boats that are fishing for marlin um, and sailfish that want to go out into the current, into the deeper water, you can still do that in these controlled pelagic zones. Right, now we're going to move inshore, which is a little bit more complicated. So I'm just going to zoom in here so that you can see the color coding. And I'm going to go right up to the north and the boundary of the MPA with Mozambique. So there you can see the border. And... If we look at these inshore zones, remember this is now activities that you're allowed to do from the shore. You'll see that from about a kilometer or 500 meters north of Cozy Mouth, all the way up to the border is a no-take restricted zone. So no harvesting, no fishing, 
anything. So this is an, a closed area um, with no, no harvesting allowed. Then on either side of Cozy Mouth, because there are quite a lot of people that stay in, in cottages and then come down to drive down to the mouth, you're allowed to fish um, at the mouth area um, <clears throat> and you're allowed to spearfish, but again, you could only shoot pelagic species if you wanted to spearfish in this area. Coming further south, you go back into a no-take zone, so no harvesting, no fishing along this area, all the way down to 13 north, it's called. Um, and then from there, all the way to Banga Neck, is another control zone. So a lot of people come to Banga Neck, it's the major access point to the coastline at Cozy Bay area, so this area fishing is, is allowed. But remember, up here, no harvesting of invertebrates. So, so only line fishing and spear fishing for pelagic fish species. Coming south of Banganek, you go into this, the same area that used to be there, which is a closed area from Bottler Point, just, just south of the little Parksward Turtle Cottage, all the way down to Dog Point, um, just south of Dog Point. There's Dog Point there, so it just comes to the south of Dog Point. This is a no-take zone. It has been like this for many years, um, and so that no-take zone stays there, and it's very important for the recovery of the reef fish species that live along this area. South of Dog Point, and including Black Rock here, you back into a controlled zone. So here, um, shore angling is allowed, and um, shore-based spearfishing for pelagic species is allowed. That goes all the way down to Lala Neck. This is Lala Neck here. And just south of Lala Neck, there's a short three kilometer no-take zone. So really what, what we were trying to do with the zonation is to have areas of the coastline with good reef habitat protected every um, couple kilometers so that there can be connectivity between the fish that are protected here and the fish that are protected here. And that's the, the rationale between having this network of closed areas. Again, south of Dalanek, this is Manzanguenya here and Island Rock. Again, it's open all the way down to Mabibi. There's Mabibi and Tonga Lodge in the bay here. Um, it's all control zone, so fishing is allowed. And then about three kilometers south of Mabibi, again, we come into a no-take zone. So here there's no fishing allowed um, all the way to the point at nine mile. So there's a, there's a stretch of about four or five kilometers here that is closed to shore angling. Remember I pointed out earlier, this is the offshore no-take area that's coming up to nine mile, nine mile reef there. And then we go back into a control zone and it's controlled all the way through. There's Sedwana Bay there, Jessup Point. So all this area inshore you're allowed to fish from and you're allowed to do shore-based diving. Then you come 10 kilometers south of Sedwana, you come to Adlam's Rocks, and Adlam's is the start of what we call a catch and release zone. So this is a new concept that's been developed for this Amangaliso MPA in particular, and here you can only uh, catch fish, but you have to release them. So you can come here and you can fish the area, shore fishing, but anything that you catch, you have to release, and you have to use barbless hook or a hook with the barb crimped on it so that you cause less damage to the fish and the idea is that you can come to these areas, you can enjoy this beautiful coastline and you can fish but you don't take any fish home with you, you release them all carefully back to the sea. That actually works now as a buffer area to this big no-take closed area or restricted area in the, in, in the old, what we used to call a sanctuary, which is now called a wilderness zone. So this area will start from the old beacon at Red Cliffs or Red, Sand, Red Sands, and it runs for 25 kilometers all the way down to Levin Point. Um, and this, this area has been closed to fishing since 1979. So it's, it really is a magnificent, pristine, unspoiled area that allows fish to recover and to regenerate and cause spillover into these adjacent areas. Then south of Levin Point, we have another 
catch and release zone. So people can come up here if you want to ride up here on a, on a, on a, on a fat bike. You can enjoy fishing here, but you have to release all your fish. That area extends all the way down to um, what we called just north of Dunn's Hut here. So that's catch and release, and there will be a signboard on the beach here showing anglers that from this point on, only catch and release fishing. South of Dunn's, all the way down to Vidal, is a control zone. So, so you're allowed to fish here, and you're allowed to keep your fish. So those people who come for the July holidays who want to catch shad are allowed to catch them and keep them within their bag limits and size limits. South of Vidal, um, you walk down past the lighthouse, you'll come to another signboard which basically is showing that there is a catch and release area that runs for about four kilometers um, past vital south ledges we used to call it and then in the middle of this area we've got a no take zone that runs for six kilometers all along here which is um, a really nice area it's very difficult to access there's no access here so it's not really affecting much of the coastline for fishing except those avid anglers that used to walk really far. Then we come to the Mission Rocks area. Mission Rocks has been zoned as a catch and release area. So this area off Mission, you can see if I zoom in close here, this is where Mission Rocks is. There's the parking area. So this area is all catch and release. So you can come here, you can enjoy the area, you can fish, but no, take no fish home. Also no harvesting of invertebrates. Then this is Peria's Rocks here, that little bay. So they've got a no-take area in front of Peria's Rocks because there's some very good habitat here. And then again, from Peria's Rocks all the way down to First Rocks, past ranges, is a, is a catch and release zone. From First Rocks all the way down past St. Lucia up to past Mapelan is all a controlled area. So this area, fishing is allowed and people who are on holiday coming to St. Lucia can fish this whole area and the same with Mapelan. Mapelan area all around Crayfish Point, you're allowed to fish, you're allowed to keep your fish. You get about Four kilometers south of Mapelan, you'll come to a no-take restricted area. This area is called Railway Ledges, and there's about a four-kilometer stretch now that is closed to fishing. There's very good ledge and reef ha inshore reef habitat here with lots of species that are protected. So the idea is to try and allow the fish here to recover. And then the Jolly Rabino is about, about here. So this area, again, is a controlled area. So anyone coming to Cape St. Lucia, there's the lighthouse up there, you're allowed to fish in this area up to that signboard north of the Jolly Rabina. With. So that is essentially how the Isamangalisa Wetland Park has been zoned. So it makes a lot of sense and the activities of anglers and divers have tried to be accommodated in the zonation plan but it will also achieve an enormous amount for the conservation of marine biodiversity and fish species in this MPA.